Hi, this is Pastor Major with Faith Baptist Church. And so I just want to ask you a question today. Are you 100% that you are going to go to heaven, that you will have eternal life? And most people, when they answer this question, usually they'll say something to the effect of, of yes, and how they know it is that they're going to be a good person, they've done good works, they go to church, they've been baptized, and things of that nature. But what does the Bible say about that? because it's what God says that really matters. And so in the Word of God in Ephesians chapter number two and verses eight and nine, the Bible says this, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so the Bible is clear there that salvation is by grace through faith, and that it's not of works, it's not of yourselves, not of the things that you do, not of the works that you do, and it says there that it is the gift of God. Now, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you had to work for a gift? Because if you work for it, then it's not actually a gift, is it? And if you even had to be good in order to get a gift, then it was not a gift because a gift is something that's free that has no strings attached. And let me ask you this as well. You know, when it comes to a gift, who pays for a gift? The giver or the receiver? Well, according to the Bible, it, it is the giver that pays for a gift. The receiver just accepts it. And so if salvation is the gift of God, God is the giver, we are the receiver, then it is God who had to pay for it, which is why the Lord Jesus Christ had to pay for our salvation with his life on the cross according to the word of God. And you know, many people would say, well, I still think you can you know, be a good person and keep the law, obey the 10 commandments and those things. But the Bible says this in Galatians chapter number two and verse number 16. The Bible says right there, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And so the Bible's pretty clear that no flesh will be justified. No one can be saved by the works of the law. Reason being is because we've all broken God's law, haven't we? We've all sinned, we've all transgressed, and the Bible makes it clear and says that if you offend the law in one point, you're guilty of the whole. Therefore, we would all be guilty because no matter how good you are, we have all sinned and we have all come short of the glory of God, which is why the Bible says in Romans chapter number three, verse number 10, it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And the Bible goes on to say there as well, Romans three twenty three, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so the Bible is clear that every one of us have sinned, and no matter how good of a person you are, doesn't matter if you're the best person that's walked on the face of the planet, you have sinned and therefore come short of the glory of God, meaning that you cannot save yourself, you cannot get yourself to heaven, that it's only by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be saved. But there is something that you do earn for your sin, and do you know what that is? Well, according to the Bible, the Bible says in Romans chapter number six and verse number 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so right there, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Now, a wage is something that you earn, it's a payment. And so what we earn or the payment for our sin is death. Now, is that just talking about physical death? Because we all know that someday we're going to die, right? Someday we're, our, we're all going to get old or we're going to get disease and we're going to pass away. But is that just talking about physical death? And you know, most people understand that it's talking about something else, but they're not quite sure about what it's talking about. But the Bible tells us this in Revelation chapter number 21 in verse number eight. The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so that lake that burns with fire and brimstone, that is the second death. That's the payment 
for our sins. You see, the payment is not your good works. It's not living a good life or being a good person. The payment for our sins was to go to hell. And one day, if you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's paid for you, then you will have to go to the lake of fire for an eternity, according to the Bible. And you may say, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. I don't deserve to go to hell. I think I've done a pretty good life. But the Bible says this, it says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and you may not be one of those, <clears throat> but the Bible says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Now let me ask you a question. If I were gonna call you a murderer, how many times would you have to commit murder in, all, in order to be called a murderer? And the answer is just one time, right? And so if I were gonna call you a liar, how many times would you have to tell a lie in order to be called a liar? Well, just one time. And every one of us, no matter how good you have lived your life, have told lies in our lifetime. Therefore, we are all sinners, and the Bible makes it plain that we deserve to go to the lake of fire and that we could never pay for our sins ourselves. And so Jesus had to pay that payment for us, which is why the Bible said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now Jesus Christ was able to pay that payment because he wasn't like you and I. And when he paid that payment, did he pay for some people or all people? And the answer is obviously all people. And how about this, did he pay for some sin or all sin? And let me ask you a question. If you said he paid for all sin, well let me ask you this, how about this? What if you committed suicide? Would you still be able to go to heaven? Well, the Bible makes it plain, and if we're going to say that he paid for all sin, then suicide would be included in all. And the Bible does say that we are cleansed from all our sin. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 7, at the end of the, the verse there, it says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And so there, that word all, it means all. That includes suicide. And so even if you committed suicide, you would still go to heaven because all means all my past, present, and future sins. And anything I could ever do in the future has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus could pay that payment for us because he wasn't like you and I. And the Bible says he was tempted in all points like as we, yet without sin. Now let me ask you another question. Was Jesus Christ God? Because many people are confused on this subject or they're not quite sure whether Jesus Christ was God or not. Many people will say, well, no, he was not God. But let me ask you this. Let's just think logically, shall we? The Bible said, the verse we saw earlier, Romans 3.23, said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that's talking about all mankind. So if Jesus were just a normal human being, then Jesus would have had sin, just like you and I, and therefore would not have been able to pay for our sins. He would have had to pay for his own. So according to what we will see in the Bible, the Bible makes it plain that Jesus Christ actually was God manifest in the flesh. I'll give you one quick verse on that. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 21, Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 1, verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, So who's speaking it? Well, it says it's spoken of the Lord, so that's God there that's speaking it. Verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And so it, did you catch what it said there? The Bible says there, one of the names that God gave Jesus was Emmanuel. That name meant God with us. So God the Father called Jesus God. And so right there, it's pretty plain that Jesus Christ is God according to the word of God. And there are many other scriptures that are pretty clear that show us that Jesus was God. For example, in Hebrews chapter number one, 
and verse number 8, uh, you have God the Father actually calling the Son God. In fact, it says there, Hebrews 1, 8, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And so right there you again have God the Father calling the Son God. And so the Bible is clear that Jesus Christ is God and that's how he was able to pay for our sins because he was God manifest in the flesh and therefore he could be perfect and have no sin and thereby pay for our sins and become the substitute for us and what we deserve. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's say Jesus Christ were to give you eternal life today and you had eternal life today. Is there anything you could do to lose that salvation? I mean, if you went out, committed murder, committed suicide, is there anything that you could do to lose that salvation? And some people would say, well, yeah, you could, uh, you could become a pretty bad person and lose that salvation. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in John chapter number 10 and verse number 28, it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So right there, the Bible is pretty clear. Jesus Christ told us three different ways in that one verse that you cannot lose your salvation. First of all, let me ask you, what does the word eternal mean? And it means forever, right? And if it means forever, let me ask you this, if you could lose your salvation, was it forever? You see, the word eternal itself means that you cannot lose your salvation. Then he goes on to say, and they shall never perish. Now that sounds like you can't lose your salvation when he says, you will never perish. Then he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now let me ask you a question. Are you of mankind? Are you a human being? And the answer is yes. And so according to the Bible, can you pluck yourself out of his hand? And again, the Bible is making it clear that, hey, neither can any man pluck himself out of his hand. So that means that no one can. So three different ways there, Jesus Christ told us you can't lose your salvation. And there are many other scriptures in the Bible that confirm this. For example, the Bible says that we are saved according to his mercy. Now, if you were to look up in the book of Psalms, I believe it's chapter 136, the entire chapter is filled with one phrase throughout that entire chapter over and over and over again. And that phrase is this, that the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. And so if we're saved according to his mercy, and his mercy endureth forever, that means you can never lose your salvation. So then the last question we have is, is what does it take in order for you to get saved. I mean, how do you get salvation in the first place? Well, Jesus Christ answered that as well in John chapter number three and verse number 36, Jesus Christ said this, he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And so what one thing in that verse did Jesus Christ say you had to do in order to be saved? And Jesus Christ said that he that believeth on the Son. So that's the one thing that Jesus Christ said. Now, what does that word believe mean? Well, that word, let me give you an example. Let's say I were going to ask you to do me a favor. And, and I said, I, and I believe in you. Well, what am I saying? I'm saying that I trust in you. I'm putting my trust in you. I'm believing on you. And I'm not trusting myself to get it done. I'm trusting you to get it done. And so when, it, when Jesus Christ says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, what he's saying is that you recognize that there's nothing you can do to save yourself and that you're only trusting him and what he did in order to be saved. And to show you that he emphasizes this, he goes on to say in verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so over and over and over again, Jesus Christ says that you just must simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you believe that, let me ask you a question here today. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, that salvation is just simply by belief or is it by your works? 
Because if it's by your works, by being a good person, then you're not trusting your, uh, trusting Christ. You're trusting yourself and what you've done. And you may say, well, it's faith plus works. Well, the Bible says in Romans 11, 6, that if it's of grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And so the Bible makes it plain that it's either of grace or it's of works. Because if it's of grace, grace is God giving you what you don't deserve, what you have not paid for, what you have not earned. And if it's of works, then it's something you have to work for, you have to earn. And we know it's by grace because the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Now, if you believe these things, if you believe that salvation is eternal, that you can never lose it, if you believe that Jesus Christ is God, if you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and paid for your sins, and if you believe it's only by believing in him, then all you have to do is place your trust in him. And here's how you do that. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so the Bible makes it plain there that all you must do is confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Not confess your sins, not confess your inadequacies, but you confess Jesus Christ and what he did that he died and arose from the grave and you believe that and the Bible says thou shalt be saved and you say well how do I do that well the Bible says in verse number 13 if you believe these things it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and so what that is saying is that if you believe these things you simply need to call out to God and tell him that you believe these things. Now you may say, well, I prayed before in the past, but here's the thing. If you misunderstood in the past and you were not believing correctly in the past, then you could not truly call on God for salvation. Because the Bible says in the very next verse, in verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? So the Bible makes it clear that you could not actually call on him if you have not truly believed. The belief must come first and then you can call on him and ask him for salvation. So why don't you just do that here today? Why don't you just call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for salvation and ask him to save you. And listen, it doesn't have to be some exact prayer. You just pray to God and ask him to save you, ask him to forgive you. You tell him that, that you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, that you're not trusting anything other than his son, and that you believe that his son died and rose again, and you pray in the Lord Jesus Christ's name, and the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So why don't you do that today? And if you're still confused, if you still don't understand these things, come by our church and visit with us. We'd love to sit down and explain more of the Word of God to you. Come visit us at Faith Baptist Church. God bless.